clarity, okay? So I'm going to describe a famous French film. You're going to see some options on the screen. Um, I would like you to basically write the, the answer in the chat box. All right. You ready? Super. Now, this is an enjoyable French film about a young man's year of study in Barcelona. He shares an apartment with people from all around the world. He forms strong friendships and they navigate cultural differences. The, the plot is interesting, it's intriguing. <laughs> the, the characters are very well developed and me personally, I really recommend this film. So, what film am I describing? Le Père Noël est un odeur, Le Belge Espagnol, Jeu d'enfant, Le Dîner de Camp. I see some answers in the chat box already. What do we have? We have, yeah, good. <laughs> I think this film is a popular one. Okay. And da, 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 da. the Belge Espanol. Bravo to those who answered. Uh, are we fans of this film? I love this film personally. Do we all like this film? See some nodding, see some thumbs. Great. <laughs> I, I watched this film for the first time um, just a couple of months ago. And I think it's probably my favorite French film I've watched. Um, if anybody has any other recommendations, uh, particularly French films for me, feel free to, to share in the, in the comments in the chat box. So this is an exact transcript of what I said when I was describing Le Belge Espagnol. This is an enjoyable film, an enjoyable French film, pardon, about a young man's year of study in Barcelona. He shares an apartment with people from around the world, forming strong friendships as they navigate cultural differences. The plot is intriguing, the characters are well-developed, and I really recommend it. Any ideas of any grammar that you notice here? Any particular tenses? You can write in the chat box. Yeah, thank you for the recommendations as well, everyone. I will definitely take note of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Some of them I've not heard of before. Thank you. Thank you. And about the, the grammar, as we can see here um, in the, the short paragraph, any ideas, any particular tenses? Is it past tense? Is it future tense? What do we think? <laughs> Past tense from Sebastian, okay. Anybody else? Not sure? Okay. We're gonna come back to this in just a moment as well. Sebastian, thank you for your answer. You're very brave. <laughs> Present says Frederic, okay, wonderful. Present, okay. <laughs> We've seen some answers come in now. Okay, today's conference, how to discuss your favorite films. Now, for me personally, this is a, a topic that's very close to my heart. I love film. I probably watch five or six films per week, uh, maybe more if, it's, if there are many new films out at the same time and I love film. That's all I've got to say on it. And I presume you all do as well. Uh, that's why you're here today. So the good thing about this topic is it quite often comes up in language exams, whether it be a TOEIC or an IELTS. I've been teaching TOEIC, I guess now for the past four years, I used to teach IELTS exams. And this was a topic that came up quite often. It also comes up, um, the other subject that also comes up is talking about books. The language you use to describe films can be quite similar with books as well. So I'm going to show you several ways to talk about films today. All right. So today's agenda, 
we're going to go over some vocabulary, some basic vocabulary to help you express why you love the film, talk about different aspects of the film. Um, I'm also going to show you some expressions that we typically use when talking about film as well. Uh, after that, some grammar, of course. Um, we'll go back to the, the little excerpt I had about L'Auberge Espanol. And then at the end of the, the conference today, I'm going to share with you a description of my own favorite film. And you're going to guess what it is, okay? Gold star to whoever gets it, okay? <laughs> Shall we begin? We all ready? Yes? Let's do it. Some vocabulary here. But some of these words you will know already. Some of them are quite similar in French, okay? We see here at the top here, director. Director. This word can be pronounced two different ways, depending on the accent, depending where you're from. The I, where I'm from, in Scotland, the UK, is a long I sound. We say director. In some other countries, they might say director, depending on the accent. You can say both, whatever is easier. My personal favorite director is, it's too difficult a question for me, <laughs> really, but if you want to share who your favorite director is, uh, please feel free to, to do so in the, in the chat. Now, the next words here, like many words in French that we have stolen from you <laughs> as English speakers, uh, this is another example of one, okay? We pronounce it like genre in English, okay? Genre. This could obviously be a comedy, an action, romance, whatever it might be. Now, the next word on the list is a little, might seem a little bit strange. Plot. Plot. My understanding in French is you have two words for this, really. Okay, but it really depends on the context. Entrée or scénario. Now, in English, we typically just use the word plot. We might say things like the story, perhaps. Uh, we might even say the script, if we're talking about the, the dialogue as well, but if we're being very general, we say plot. So I could say the plot of L'Auberge Espanol. It's about a man, he shares an apartment with people from all over the world. Okay. The next one, I think many of you will know this one, character, personage. Who's your favorite character in a film? Any film? <laughs> Setting. You should know this one. Leo, environment. Ending. We can talk about endings being happy. We can talk about them being sad. We can talk about them being dramatic. We can talk about cliffhangers. Does anybody know that term, cliffhanger? I'm seeing a nod from Erica, a state not sure. Erica, cliffhanger, any idea? Not sure? I'm going to write this term in the chat box. I didn't include it in the, the presentation, but it's, it's a good one. Cliffhanger. It's basically when, uh, yep, so there is a film called Cliffhanger as well. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Um, but we can also use the term cliffhanger to, to talk about a film that has a very dramatic ending, but we don't know what's going to happen. It leads right to the climax, but then we don't see the climax. The film just ends in that moment. Okay, that's how we would describe a, a cliffhanger. We should have included that one, I think. It's a, it's a good one. <laughs> now, some other words that are very important, in my opinion. Soundtrack. I don't know about you guys, but I love a film with a great soundtrack. I think it's very important. Cast. 
you probably see in French casting, the list of actors, the people involved in the film. Now I live in uh, Quebec. If some of you, some of you know this already, some of you don't, I live in Montreal. They would definitely not say casting <laughs> here in French. Um, but I believe it is an English word, Erica. Yes. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's used a lot in France as well. Let's talk about the, the list of actors. Uh, the people involved in the film, the production team, etc. All right. Special effects. I think this one's a given. Review, critique, and the reason why we're all here today to talk about our favorite films. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some expressions with these, uh, with some of these terms here as well. For example, one could say, I admire the director's style. You know, if a, a director has a very unique or interesting style that's very recognizable, someone that comes to mind for me is Wes Anderson. Luc Besson, to a certain extent as well, um, perhaps Quentin Tarantino. They all have very, very distinctive, unique styles. And if you like their style, I admire the director's style or I adore the director's style. The next one here, we have a, a little phrasal verb, fall into, in the middle. Okay, This film falls into the comedy genre. This is literally a fancy way of just saying this film is a comedy or this film is a drama. It's just another way of saying that really. This film falls into the comedy genre. Next, the main character's development was impressive. The film's setting in a futuristic world is captivating. The ending left me speechless. It was shocking. As you can see from the, the previous three sentences that I've read there, we have some adjectives. Impressive, captivating, speechless. When describing anything, especially film or a book, the more adjectives, the better to express your emotions about the film, the setting, the characters, everything. The more adjectives, the better. The next one here, I like this sentence. <laughs> the soundtrack enhances the emotions in each scene. Famous director who is, I guess, very famous for soundtracks is Quentin Tarantino. Not sure if all of you are familiar with his work, um, but usually his soundtracks go perfectly with every scene in the film. It's something he's very famous for. The cast includes some of my favorite actors. Personal favorite actor of mine is Gary Oldman. Um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with him, but um, if you have some favorite actors, favorite actresses, feel free to type them in the comments as well. And the next one here. Yes, exactly. Someone recognizes Gary Oldman. Yes, Meryl Streep, of course, classic Queen Meryl, right? <laughs> Ryan Gosling as well, of course. Yep. <laughs> Good. Thanks for sharing, everybody. De Niro, uh, of course. Abdelaziz, yes. <laughs> Love Robert De Niro. Raging Bull, have you seen that film? Jim Carrey. <laughs> Good list, everyone. Everyone's got taste here. I like this. <laughs> so back to the expressions here before we digress and talk about all of our favorite actors. Um, one could also say, you know, the script is well written, uh, very clever with very clever dialogue, something like that. 
Um, another good word here for clever, in fact, could be witty. I'll write this in the chat box as well, witty. Okay. This is a word we quite often use if the dialogue is very clever and perhaps there's a little bit of comedy with it as well. Okay. Clever being intelligent. Okay. Witty. Intelligent. Intelligent. But with a little bit of comedy in there as well. And the last one here. The special effects in this film are mind-blowing. Smart could be an option as well, Abdelaziz, yeah. Similar, clever, intelligent, smart, these are all synonyms pretty much, but witty, there's a level of intelligence, but there's also comedy with it as well. So think intelligent and funny combined. Sean Connery, I see a, a comment there. Another fellow Scotsman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, pardon, I am originally from Scotland. Um, so when anybody says Sean Connery, it's one of our greatest exports from Scotland, I guess. <laughs> okay. So far, so good. See some thumbs up here. All good. Yep. Um, mind blowing. Mind blowing is like oh, incroyable, très magnifique, uh, really, really incredible. Okay. It's like a very strong adjective for something that's really incredible. Okay. Now we're going to do a little game, a little test here. Okay. I'm going to show you some pictures of very famous films. And I want you to basically type any word that comes to mind when you see this poster. Now, some of you might not have seen these films. That's absolutely fine. Maybe just use some adjectives about the poster. Okay. Um, is it beautiful? Is it scary? That kind of thing. First up, The Joker, 2019. Very famous film. So what comes to mind with this? Scary. Ooh, good one, Florence. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> original. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. The film is original. It's marvelous. Sad. Is it sad, perhaps? Sad. Gotcha. One of the best films from the last years. Okay, so you could say from the last few years, yep. Okay, excellent. And Joaquin Phoenix is incredible, is incredible. Yeah, I completely agree. He's a, a genius in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks for, for sharing that, everybody. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. I wonder if you've seen this film as well. Makes me think about society. Ah, Joker. Yeah. Makes me think about society, Erica. Think about. Okay. Good. Ooh, charming. Priscilla, I like this word. Yeah, charming. What other adjectives could we use? And as I say, if you've not seen this film, that's absolutely fine. You can maybe describe the picture of it. What does it make you feel? What's the appearance like, you know? Do we think it's a happy film? Is it sad? Dancing, yeah, <laughs> there's definitely dancing. Gives a happy feeling, Erica, yep. Makes you feel happy. Excellent, okay. I like this film a lot. It's, uh, it's very charming. It's a love story. Yep, definitely a love story, Olivia. Yep, thank you for that. I like the word charming a lot there. It was pretty sealed that said that. Um, I think that's a good word to definitely describe this film. 
dramatic comedy. Yep. So we would probably say in English here, comedy drama, the reverse, like this, okay? Rather than a dramatic comedy, comedy drama, okay? It's uh, comedy drama, like so. Thanks, Abdelaziz. We'll take a look at the last one here, okay? Now, this film has been mentioned in the comments already by none other than Erica. <laughs> Psychic. <laughs> Medium. <laughs> so what do we think of this film, everybody? So the classic Leon, The Professional, released in 1994. One of your favorites, yep. Childhood film. Mind blowing. Good use of that there. Well done. Action movie. Very good. Hectic. Ooh, okay. That's an interesting word. Why hectic, Abdelaziz? I'm curious. Yes. <laughs> Music from Sting at the end. A lot of action. Yes, there's definitely a lot of action. I, I definitely agree. Hectic is, for those asking, hectic is, it could mean like chaotic. Okay, like chaotic, really, really busy. Um, no, nothing is quiet, nothing is calm. Okay, it's like chaos. Okay. And Jean Reno is excellent. Yes, I completely agree. Any favorite films from the list? I've shown you Leon the Professional, La La Land, uh, what was the other one? Joker. <laughs> Any favorite films from that list? Let me know in the, in the comments as well. So, the fun part of today, grammar. At the beginning of the class, I asked you to Identify the grammar that I use when describing l'auberge espagnol. I'll read it again. This is an enjoyable French film about a young man's year of study in Barcelona. He shares an apartment with people from all around the world, forming strong friendships as they navigate cultural differences. Okay. Any ideas last time? I know some of you said present, a couple said past. Any ideas before we look at the grammar? Give you a sec. Past, okay. Let's take a look at the grammar. All right. Now, when we talk about a story, when we talk about the plot of a film, when we talk about anything like that, maybe the, the story of a play in a theater, we typically use the present simple. As we can see here, in La La Land, two aspiring artists, Mia and Sebastian, meet and fall in love in Los Angeles. The plot of Joker is about the transformation of Arthur Fleck into the iconic villain, the Joker. The last one there, Leon the assassin takes care of a young girl named Matilda. As we can see here, the present simple is being used in all of these sentences. Now this, as I say, is the tense we typically use when describing the story or the plot of a film. Now, that's not to say you cannot experiment. Of course you can. English is a very subjective language. You can do a lot with it. You could talk about it from a past perspective. Maybe talking about the actors themselves, or maybe even the story to a certain extent. In La La Land, Mia and Sebastian's love story faced various challenges as they pursued their dreams. Notice the use of the past simple here. In Joker, Joaquin Phoenix portrayed the character of Arthur Fleck, Fleck pardon, <laughs> brilliantly. He won an Academy Award. 
Once again, the past simple being used here. In Leon the Professional, Natalie Portman played the role of Matilda, a young girl who wants revenge. Played the role of Matilda. Okay. Now, if any of you attended my conference last week on the present perfect, you should be experts in this tense now. <laughs> so, Olivia, I'm looking at you. You were here last week. <laughs> you could use the present perfect here to talk about your experience of the film. I've seen La La Land and I found it to be visually stunning, uh, to be a visually stunning and emotional film. Pardon. I found it to be a visually stunning and emotional film. I have watched Joker. I have to say Joaquin Phoenix's performance was outstanding. I have always loved Leon, the professional. It's one of my favorite films. So we have the use of the subject, have and has, past participle here. And as I say, we would probably use this to talk about your own experience or, you know, maybe for example, when you saw it, well, not exactly when, more how many times you've seen it, perhaps. Like, I have seen this film five times. I have seen it 20 times. Like me in the next film, I'm just about to show you. <laughs> so, I'm going to share with you a description of my own personal favorite film. And I would like you all to guess what it is, okay? If you've not seen it before, don't worry, it's okay. But if you can, if you can guess, that would be great. So, many sentences here, mostly the present simple, but some other ones there too. I've loved this film since it premiered in 2003. I watch it once every two or three months. Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson are the stars of the film. Bill Murray said that it was his favorite film he has starred in. The film is a drama. It's about a middle-aged actor who visits Japan for work. He meets a young woman at a hotel who isn't happy in her marriage and they form an interesting friendship. I really love the director, Sofia Coppola's style in this film. The soundtrack enhances the emotion in each scene. I recommend it to anyone who likes drama films, films about travel and good soundtracks. I see one comment lost in translation. Any other guesses here? Does this film ring any bells? Perhaps you've seen it before. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I love this film. If you have not seen this film, please watch it. It's incredible. Okay. Bastide, I think might have got this correct here. Natalie, I think you might have got this correct here. Okay. So, dun, 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 dun. lost in translation. Poster. Well done, Natalie. You get a gold star. Okay. <laughs> I'll send it to you from Montreal. How about that? <laughs> Superb. Now, everybody, if you have not seen this film, if you like films that are, you know, it's a drama, it's about travel, it's set in Tokyo, um, please watch this film. It's truly a masterpiece. I, I love this film a lot. Um, is it on Netflix? I'm not sure in France. It's on Netflix here in Canada, uh, where I live. Um, you should be able to find it in one of the major streaming platforms. I imagine it's quite a famous film. Um, yeah, and is it affordable in English, subtitled in English? Um, I think you mean, is it understandable in English? Yes, is it understandable? Yeah, the dialogue in it is quite slow, I have to say. Um, it's not very advanced. I reckon everybody could watch it, um, perhaps with subtitles in English, please. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful film. It's a really, really beautiful film. And I, I highly recommend it to, to everyone. All right. 
So, everyone, uh, that is almost our time for today. So I'm just going to conclude with some advice for everyone. Advice when talking about films. So make sure you practice the basic film vocabulary. So for example, director, actor, plot, favorite scene, main character, etc. When you're providing a summary, say what the film is about. Mention its title, of course, and the genre, comedy, drama, etc. Bear in mind, we normally use the present tense, present simple, when providing summaries of films. So like I said before, the, the film Lost in Translation is a drama. It's about a middle-aged actor who visits Japan for work. He meets a young woman, etc., etc. Give descriptions. Use all of those adjectives that you all know. I know you all know them. <laughs> the more adjectives, the better. Share your feelings. Share why you love this film. Talk about the characters, the, the performance, the your favorite scenes, the director's style, and whether or not you would recommend this film. Okay. There's a couple of modules on the e-learning platform to help you talk about cinema. Uh, there's an A2 one, there's a B1 one, which I think would be better for everybody, and a B2 one as well. I think there might be a C1 as well if anybody wants to, to challenge themselves as well. Okay. Everybody, thank you so much for, for joining me today. I realize I've taken you a little bit over the time than expected, uh, so apologies about that. Um, if anybody has any questions, any comments they want to share just now, please feel free to do so. Um, and I, as I say, I hope you found this conference enjoyable, useful, and yeah, as, and watch Lost in Translation, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to stop recording now, everyone. Thank you, thank you, every, everyone, for, for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And um, I'm doing another conference uh, next week if you want to attend. It's going to be very business focused. Um, it's going to be about um, language we use when communicating online, particularly on social media. It's suitable for C1 and above okay so guys thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for the the, the kind words there abdelaziz and uh yeah hopefully see you all again very soon bye everyone thanks. Bye, bye thank you bye bye <laughs>